Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm proud to present a review on this 2022 Ford Bronco Sport. And without further ado, let's go ahead and start it up and let it run. This particular Bronco Sport is finished off in a color known as Oxford White. It's one of the most common Ford colors. And you have an older Ford flip key with you have lock, unlock, and panic. Push it twice, you have the lock horn and the alarm. One thing I don't like is you can't push unlock to stop it. You have to, you have to push the panic button. And like in a normal car, you have to hold it. But say if you leave the keys in your pocket and you accidentally push it, you're going to get all the attention which is kind of a pain in the ass, especially like on like the Prius, which you have to hold it for a few seconds, then it would just go off. But this you have to like, if you push it once, you're screwed, which is really is something that Ford should definitely address. And also one more thing, like get it, it's too short of the honks, like the alarm, it honks for too short. Like it barely sounds like longer than like a lock horn, which really is just annoying. This is a base model, so it has black door handles and no keyless entry system of any kind. So it's locked, you can't just go ahead, you have to unlock it. You can also use it manually if you so desire. To open it up. This one has a black cloth interior. And the driver's seat is six-way, manually adjustable. To start the Bronco Sport, you flip the key up, push this button, and insert the key into ignition. And flip to the right to start. The driver's side window is fully automatic. It's running, so it's not going to be up too high. This has a 11,561.7 miles and a 1.5 liter three cylinder engine. What about a turbo spool? And an eight speed automatic transmission. You have low gear as well. Put it back in park. And in reverse, you do get a backup camera with adjustable guidance lines. Put it back in park. And you have a free spoke. Vinyl wrap steering wheel. That's a very nice wheel. Power trims are letter wrapped. And also, the horn sound is actually probably one of the best sounding. Let's go outside. Like, seriously, this is probably one of the best on any car. Like, seriously. That goes a lot, very loud. Probably one of my favorites. So, I'm gonna cool. Let's turn on the headlights, fog lights, and the hazards. Um, this doesn't have fog lights, but it has the running lights. You have a very nice hazard sound. And I'm not sure how the fog lights go. Yeah, that's, yeah, never mind. It's just the high beams. Or what about slow? Not the best. Let's go ahead and do an exterior walk around. And when the door opens, the car will chime to let you know that it has been opened. Let's do a walk around of the exterior. The only thing I'm scared of is the control stack getting wet. So I don't know if I'm going to leave this open. Make sure the doors are locked. Yeah, I'm going to close it. 
I release mostly and keep it closed because I'm scared of the, everything is just going to get wet. So, the Bronco Sport has LED daytime running lights, turn signals, and the headlights are projector. And they actually do look very good on this car. So, for the Bronco, there's the big body on frame Bronco, which is the regular one. And then there's this, which is the Bronco Sport. This one is unibody, but it's still nearly as capable. You have Continental Pro Contact TX tires. And there's also a lot of brake dust on the base model wheels, which is kind of a pain. It's kind of annoying. These are 225, 65 R17s. And this car competes with mainly the Toyota RAV4, Honda CRV, and Hyundai Tucson, along with many others, and even Ford's very own Escape, which is what this car is based on. This used the same platform as those vehicles, and this is a base model that has a 1.5 liter three cylinder, which is currently being recalled for a fire risk, which does kind of suck, but this one doesn't have any issues so far. It's, it's very reliable. You have gloss black finish on the B and C pillar. The A pillar is plastic. You have plastic mirrors, a little bit of plastic accenting. And on higher trims, there would be a logo that says what trim you have, like the big bend. Outer banks and bad winds have that. And you have black door handles and a little bit of black accenting right here. You have rear mud flaps. They're hard though and very dirty. You have halogen reverse lights, turn signals, and a little bit of LED accenting on the brake lights. You have a Ford Bronco Sport logo. You have a dual exhaust right over here. This car is very capable, like no issues so far whatsoever. And but I, I'm not sure, this kind of looks misaligned. I don't know, it's weird, but it really isn't. Maybe it's just the doors that slightly open. It still looks a little misaligned. It is raining, but let's go ahead and check out the hood. So what Ford has done is there's no latch on the center. To open the hood, you just pop this twice. And that opens your hood. And you just pull it up. And you have access to the 1.5 liter EcoBoost. This one doesn't stay up in any sort of way. It's a pretty good motor. It makes 181 horsepower. Torque would be in the, in the text down below. Here's the battery. Just a normal engine. I really like what Ford has done in the process of opening and closing the hood because it makes everything way simpler than just like going under and getting a latch to open it. I'm very impressed by that. Now let's go ahead and check out the infotainment. There's some way to open the gas cap too. I'm not entirely sure you have a manual steering column. Uh, I don't know how you open the gas cap. So, you have a 8 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I have no idea what that is. Some sort of radio. You have your volume, your tuning. Very, very nice if you're on tune stations very quickly. Very good. I'm moving it back. I'm probably just moving it too hard. I'm trying to tune it. Today, call of course, there's an ad. Sound system isn't bad. It's pretty good. Especially this being a base model. I think it has like six speakers. Here's the visor. See if it passes. 
Nope, I think it fails the test. There's no expansion. But both the driver and passenger side gets mirrors. But they do not have any lights, which does suck. Give your sunglasses holder. And you have your dome lights right over here. You push this button. Oh wow, that button is very hard to push. You can turn it off at all times. Like even if the door's not open. See, if, like if I have it left open, it will turn on. It's very unique. You have a manual dimming rear view mirror. Push it and it adjusts. Which would be nice to see automatic. But it's a very nice infotainment system. It's probably one of the best ones. Ford Sync. I've always loved it. It's just been a, such a good system. It's very fast, intuitive. You have tons of features. Even this one doesn't have navigation. But who uses it anymore? You can change the clock. I think it's 237. Do you even have vehicle Wi-Fi? That's very cool. I think you can connect. I don't know if this is vehicle. Like, this is way better than the infotainment on like a RAV4, which is boring. It has a little to none features. You have auto start, and you also do have two cup holders, plus a mini one right here. If you want to store something small, it's very spacious. I don't know what my sister's hiding over there. It's very dirty. Here's the parking brake. Auto hold. Very nice. Push it up and down. And we're going to turn off the car now. But, and we're going to show the rest of the vehicle. The center console is very large. The owner's manual isn't too big, which probably makes it seem like it's bigger than it actually is. It's a brand new manual, never been cracked open. You have info on there, you have like the date. It's a very nice manual. And also one more thing about the horn. The 2021s have a wimpy single tone. This is a double tone. Like this is a very lovely sound. Even the signal will sound great. So, let's go ahead and tour the rear. And the passenger side too. There's also quite a few neat features in this car. Like, space in the passenger seat. You have enough for like a hydro flask and nature valley bars. Typical stereotype of this car. Plenty of airbags. Like, this car is totally amazing. Like, even a, like, rugged material in this, and like, the storage compartments. I was not very clean in it right now. Here's the center console. Tons of space. You have a USB-A and C port. Along with another one right here. So you have a total of four USB ports on the front, which is a very sizable amount. Tons of space in here. You could probably store much more. There's no protection though. I don't expect them to be. The console is actually like a letter wrapped, so it's very nice. Even the seats, like usually I do not like how cloth seats feel, but these are totally fine. Like these feel nice. Usually I do not like cloth at all, but these are actually very good. Like I'm totally comfortable. Like, even more so than sitting in a car with, like, a letter seat. That's no huge advantage. You have a storage compartment right over here. You can store thin items. That's very neat. None on the drivers. But the passenger side, you can store, like, something. You could probably store a phone. Hopefully you don't lose it, though. But, yeah. That's another one of the big pluses of this car. It's just a sheer storage space. Which is just... 
crazy to think about it. Let's hop in the rear. Oh, wow. Water's dripping. I'm going to go on the other side because there's a lot of crap on the right side. Water is dripping. Oh, I got my sister's hair. That's disgusting. I need to get this stuff out. So, quite a bit more space. You, have a, you don't have space for like a hydro flask, but you have space for a decent sized arrowhead bottle. And a couple more Nature Valley bars, in case you want to stash them. USB-C and a port in the back. Let me get one so you can't charge all your devices. And automakers, listen up. We don't have any air conditioning. That's exactly what we want because it's so annoying. Like, these automakers, they always cheap out on, like, not adding air vents in the rear. Even though it costs such a little amount of money to add. Like, come on. Like, we don't have to roll the windows. A kid may accidentally do it, and they don't have any, any AC, so, like, so dumb. Same thing goes for the storage compartments. You don't get any compartments back here. Like, come on, Ford. What the heck are you thinking? Seriously, it's just so stupid. They don't, you don't offer any compartments yet. There's all this storage in the front. Like, come on, Ford. You're, you're better than this. Like, not any side nor you don't get any center console either so you don't have a, a lot of space for storage in the second row because even if you were to put something in the floorboard like stuff this size you wouldn't have enough space for any leg room which means that that rear passengers can't sit there without having to have their legs up which is tremendously uncomfortable and i don't want to do it but I'm like five foot eight, and you see, I have a ton of leg room. Standing up, I stand up straight. Someone, I have like six inches on top of me, which means someone at like six three, six four can probably sit in the back of here comfortably. Let's go ahead and show you the trunk. So there are a couple cool, neat features in the trunk. Like, for example, you can open the glass, which. For example, the Chevy Suburban has had this for like years, so you don't want to list something that's absolutely massive. You just pull up the glass, and you can put small items on here, which is a very big convenience. This is my hand for scale. So, not too big. And to close, very easy. You also have a little bit of a Bronco Easter egg of the original one. That's a very nice thing to see. Ford definitely has a couple of Easter eggs in this car. Here's the trunk. Very spacious trunk. Ignore the stuff in here. You have a 12 volt cigarette lighter. So we've had this car since March. And which means we've had this car for almost a year. It's been 11 months. We have a light back here. I don't know what that does. It doesn't do anything. Can open it. Stay in ball. These things are so round, so I don't ever open this. And you have your donut tire. I think we had to use this, remember? We had to use this when the main tire got flat, so we had to use this temporarily for like a day. It's a pretty good donut. It's a Maxxis spare tire. And it's uh, 155. 70 D17. Never heard of a D. I thought it was always R. Maybe it's just spare tires or something. I'm not sure how to pop this back. Oh, there we go. Wow. It's actually very heavy. Like, it's probably because I have all the stuff on top of it. And you have a little bit of storage to prevent stuff from, like, flying out the trunk, which is a neat feature. You have your coat hang. You have coat hangers right here. You just push this down. You have access. You have four of them. Now tell me that isn't cool. Like, come on. And the seats are 60-40, fold, split. And this is a 60, you just push this button and they fold. Can't fold them because there's a lot of crap that's right there. So they fold down. And, oh wow, it's stuck because of the seat belt. 
That latch is just in the place. Oh, come on, seatbelt. Stop. There we go. These are very light seats. They're very easy to fold and not having any issues with them whatsoever. Probably one of the lightest seats I've felt. And you have one more added bonus. You see this right here? That is actually a bottle opener where you can open, like, say like a Mexican Coke. You just pop that and there you go. You can open it without having to bring your bottle opener. It saves you a little bit of time in case you ever lose it, but now you don't have to in the Bronco Sport. So, comparing this car to like the Honda CRV and the Toyota RAV4, this car is pretty much as good as them and it can probably even beat them. Like, this car has many neat features and cool quirks that a RAV4 could only wish to have. Like, a bottle opener? Come on. Does your RAV4 have that? I didn't think so. So, whilst this car may not have a four-cylinder, it's still better than them in any way. Like, for example, the Honda CRV has a CVT, whereas this has none of that. It's just has a regular eight-speed automatic. Whilst this car does cost a few grand more to start with than a RAV4, it's totally worth it. Whereas, if you buy something like a Toyota, for example, you get that reliability with the brand you've always known. But Ford, they've been in the they've been in the market for years and years, like hundred years, and they know how to make a good car. And this is certainly one of them. Like the Big Bend has white lettering on a higher trim. Like, come on, you just open the glass. That's like a feature that a Suburban has. It's really pouring, saying, so "Hey, come on, close." It's not closing for some reason. Use this. Come on, close. Close. You have to pull it hard, though. But it's still very nice to see. It's pouring very, very hard right now. And this car really looks good with a mix of rain and dirt on it right now. Like, it's peeling a little bit. But this is a very good value for 30 grand. And... Back like in 2019 with the Escape, it, you didn't get crap in that car, like for the base model. Like you didn't get no touchscreen. And it's still even the same today for the Escape. Like it's like multiple grand less and you don't get a huge touchscreen like you do on the Bronco Sport. You don't get that cool nameplate. No, no, none of that. Like, well, it's still got the classic Ford quality. Which actually is pretty good. Like, like, I have my hand on it and no jerking. What do, not very much rattling on the center console. No creaking. It does move a little bit. There's a little bit of rattling right over here. On the gauges. Screen does too. But that's probably very good quality. Like, actually, like, quality is probably one of the best in its class. Same thing, you get a weak ass meep when you honk a Prius, but in this thing, none of that. Like, everything about this car is just better than the Toyota. Like, you get more features, more value for money. Like, and also, you get that sweet American Ford chime. And a sweet Ford turn signal, which actually. It doesn't play when you have the door open. Like, it doesn't make any sound, but only makes a chime because that's more important than having your blinkers on for roadside assistance. You have to hear this chime, but the indicators tell you enough. Very weird thing that Ford does, but auto hold, auto parking brake, all these features for 30 grand, which is a huge bonus. Like, trust me, like a Hyundai Tucson. Well, that car is actually very nice. Like, the Kia Sportage and the Hyundai Tucson, both those vehicles are probably, like, some of the best for the money. You get the most tech, like, especially in the S trim on the Kias. That's where you get everything, like, leather seats at the best price. Like, my my old nannies has a new Soul 2023. She picked it up, and I did a review on that thing, and it was twenty two grand. had a fully digital cluster, 
hit up like a huge 10 inch touchscreen for like 23 grand. That's, that's, that's a deal. But this car may not have a 10 inch, inch touchscreen, but it's certainly close in terms of, of value for money. I still think the Soul is probably one of the best values in the car market right now. But this is easily in my top 10. Like, also, this may not have a four-cylinder. It's still an amazing car for the money. And I swear by it, too. Like, everything about it is just amazing. Like, for 23 grand, I mean 28 grand, you're getting everything you need, plus a few more tidbits. And... Thank you guys for watching my review on the 2022 Ford Bronco Sport. If there's anything else you wanted me to note of, please consider subscribing. Goodbye. And also one more thing, you have roof bars too. I don't think your RAV4 has that. Maybe it does. I don't know. But anyways, thanks for watching.